Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Luscious Female Fans. Steve Alish is here, back with more on the AT&T 3G shutdown. I wanted to do an update because the date is quickly approaching. I understand that they pushed back the shutdown for the 3G services a few months, but I think that's more on a technical level because the FCC or FTC or somebody stepped in and said they want to study the impact on airports or whatever it happened to be a little bit more. But the consumer date for the shutdown seems to be set February 22nd, 2022 on the AT&T network. And I've been getting a lot of comments on the older videos. People are getting those dreaded texts saying, hey, your device is no longer going to be supported. It's time to update or use the awful device that we sent you in the mail. So, I'm going to include a few resources down in the comments section below because this is going to get a little bit more technical than I usually like to do, but I think it's important because if you can have the knowledge going into the conversation that you have with technical support, you have that much of a greater chance of getting to save your phone. And it does matter because a lot of people in the comment section say, hey, my S8, my S9, my unlocked one that I maybe got a non-carrier version is working just fine and they absolutely are. Money's tight. People don't want to invest in a new phone right now. Or maybe you just paid off the phone that you're using and saying, hey, I'm enjoying being without a phone payment. Is that $30, $40 a month? If you could pocket that right now, that's all money in the bank, literally. So if we could go ahead and help and keep a few devices on the network longer that you need, that's really the goal here. So if you're new here, if you're liking all the tech, go ahead and tussle that subscribe button. It certainly means a lot to me on our road to now 69 hundred subscribers okay so the resources number one i'm going to include the list of lte bands that at&t says the phone must have in order to be voice over lte certified do they need all of them i don't know that's what they're saying from what i'm reading the important one seems to be band 12 which handles the emergency services voice over lte so if you have that Maybe you could luck out with missing a couple of the other ones. Again, this is well above my pay grade as far as the technical specs on this, but I don't want to make a mistake on it. So I'm going to include all the bands for LTE, for AT&T, down in the description below for the video. The other resource that I'm going to put there is a, is a link to a website that's been fantastic for me. I think it's phonesmore.com. I'll have the specific link down below. It basically breaks down international versions and the different versions of devices so if you have the sony xperia one is a great example there's a bunch of different devices there's a the global the international version there's the one for the usa and it includes if you if you go down below and you hit the kind of expand bands button that's there it'll actually show you the bands that are specific to that model number which is important because when you look at the at&t website that's how they're breaking it down by model number so you can compare you say hey listen this is the model number that they support my model number includes the same bands or at least most of the ones that they say they need let me go to tech support and see what i can do and there's several things going on here when it comes to how you're going to combat this i'm not trying to paint all the at&t store employees with the same brush it's just like everything else in this world there's going to be good ones and there's going to be ones that really don't care but when it comes to your money you care so you want to make sure that you get proper service the store, they're just going to tell you, they're going to tow the company line and say, this, these are the phones that are supported. You got to get something else. In fact, they've told people that phones that I know for a fact are supported aren't supported and tried to get them to sell something because they they got sales numbers and stuff. And AT&T as a whole has been lazy whitelisting devices because it's more sales for them. Even if you don't buy it from them, they figure a large enough percentage of people are going to buy it. So they're not in a big hurry to go ahead and whitelist and provision devices that may very well be compatible with their network, but yeah, and ones that they haven't come across yet. So they're just going to leave it be and have you spend your money, but we're not into that. The second thing is there's are, there are going to be older phones that legitimately just can't handle voice over LTE because it's a double-edged sword. It's not necessarily just the bands that need to be supported, but it's also software that needs to support the voice over LTE. In fact, the Pixel, the original Pixel, I believe will work but it needed a software update that i think came out in 2017 2018 that supports voice over lte so if you have that and you check and it has the bands i would go ahead and speak with them i was talking about the in-store support the way to do this is not customer support it's not in-store support you have to go on their website 
you have to speak with technical support and it's best to do that in chat because you could put your IMEI number in there. You could tell them, hey, listen, this it supports voice over LTE on your network. Please provision slash whitelist my device. It's important to use that terminology. Say, I want my device whitelisted. I want my device provisioned for voice over LTE. It will work on your network. Some devices, like I said, are just too old. They just don't support it. They're gonna have final say, unfortunately, on all of these. So they might just say, no, I'm sorry, your device is too old, tough. But a lot of them support the bands, or most of them, and should be through software able to handle the voice over LT that they're just not whitelisting. If it's not on their list, they don't care. And a lot of those, a majority of those, are ones that they never sold as carrier devices. The big kind of goal has, happens to be that the gap, chasm happens to be between devices that they sold themselves and devices that you got unlocked from either the, the Samsung or Apple or whoever themselves or through Amazon third party, something like that. If they, you sold, if you bought it through them, they seem to be okay with it. In fact, they're going all the way back to a Galaxy Note 4. So you think about how nuts that is. I think an LG G3, as long as it was purchased through them. Microsoft Lumia, or Nokia Lumia rather, 830. So we're going way back, as long as they sold you the phone. So there's a, a big, big number of devices still out there that will still be supported as long as they sp support those specific bands. And there's a lot of newer devices that they're just kicking off because they're unlocked. A lot of people I, were saying that their, their Note 9s are being kicked off. Note 9 should not be kicked off unless you got a really weird region-specific version. But I, Samsung didn't do a lot of that. You'll see when you go on phonesmore.com, you'll see a lot of the bands are similar. So it's not a necessary issue that they're just kicking off these devices. But if you got a text, if they keep kicking your device off the network, at least do a little legwork before you go out and spend the money because these phones aren't cheap anymore. Right? Even if you get a carrier deal, even if you're making payments and there's zero interest and all the stuff they try to sell you on, it's still an extra 40 bucks a month. You may not be paying that thousand bucks out of pocket all out up front, but you're going to pay it. You're going to pay it. So if you could take a few minutes, try to get your device back on, especially if it's a newer device. A lot of all these newer devices are voice over LTE compatible or at least a good portion of them, especially if you bought it inside the united states if you bought it at best buy unlocked if you got it straight from the manufacturer and you bought it here in the united states unlocked these are supported devices the moto g style is 5g they want to kick that off bought from motorola here in the united states it's supported go ahead and fight for it so make sure that you chat with technical support check the bands on your device and don't settle for just a text that they're sending you saying your device is not supported because they are not doing the legwork. They're just not. They're not going device by device. They're not being discerning. They're literally just, just huge chunks of devices they're throwing off the network. And they haven't done, because it, it benefits them to be lazy in this area. The less phones that they whitelist, the more chance they have of making more sales. And it's always going to be about that bottom line. But it's your money. It's your device. It pains me. A bunch of comments with people with S8s and S9s and Note 9s and all the rest of it saying they're getting booted off the device. No. Nonsense. Make sure. Make absolute sure. And don't trust them just because they're the carrier and you think they have some authority here. They may have final say on whether your device gets back on or not, but they are certainly have not done the legwork on whether your device is capable of being on the new and improved network when they switch over February 22nd of this month month so if you've made it this far like comment subscribe as you know in the other two videos i did on the 3g shutdown leave comments below I, I'm, I'm more than happy to help on certain devices and, and give the knowledge that i have here it gets super technical i understand that but hopefully hopefully some of this stuff can help keep a few of your devices on the network longer until next time have that steve delicious day